Hang on. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times contestants outsmarted the Taskmaster. You wouldn't have done the same in that situation? No, I like to play for fun. <laughs> Toothpaste. <laughs> no! Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most unique and downright brilliant approaches to tasks made by contestants throughout the many series of Taskmaster. For obvious reasons, we'll be focusing on solutions to tasks deemed valid by Greg and Alex and not resulting in disqualification, as we believe these are the best examples of outsmarting the task without outright cheating. Which celebrity do you think showed off the most brain power? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Catherine Parkinson's Coconut Extraction. If you use the same coconut water extraction method as another contestant, you will both be disqualified. Taskmaster wouldn't be the show it was without the hilarity of watching celebrities fail miserably at simple tasks. In Series 10, the contestants were presented with various tools to help them extract a tablespoon of water from a coconut as fast as possible, but not before adding one final fruity twist. Some decided to smash it open, believing everyone else would be too concerned with choosing a less obvious method, but this was hardly an original thought. We have some in the kitchen. It's not breaking any rules, is it? Catherine Parkinson, however, headed to the fridge and conveniently found a carton of coconut water to drink with ease. Well, my extraction method was I went to the fridge. All oh, right, let's see. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks. Goodbye. Her unique interpretation of extraction won her points for style, as well as the top spot in the task, despite not being the quickest. Number nine, Mawan Rizwan's Bin Juice Cocktail. Yo. Oh. Also during series 10, everyone was given the straightforward task of making the prettiest and tastiest cocktail with the coolest name. But they had to achieve all of this without making a noise over 60 decibels, around the same volume as a normal conversation. The assortment of glassware, metal utensils and ice proved to be a noisy cocktail in itself, and with every mistake, they had to pour their hard work into the bin and shout a phrase. I'm so sorry! Louder. I'm so sorry! Louder. I'm so sorry! <laughs> Mawan Rizwan turned this unfortunate fate to his advantage, though. As his bin filled with more and more ingredients, Mawan's bespoke bin juice cocktail was born for Alex to enjoy, or at least try to. <laughs> Number eight, the contestants hack charades. It's a book! In the finale of the third series, the celebs split into groups to play charades with a few added rules. Wearing foam fingers at all times, and with a 500-foot river separating them, was more than enough to grind their gears. Dave Gorman decided that acting out his cards would be too much work. Instead, recruiting adventurer and TV presenter Ben Fogel, who just happened to be passing by for a photo shoot. <laughs> Mad Max! Mad Max! Mad Max. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh! Winnie the Winnie Pooh? The While the rules stated that the contestants may not raise their voices, that didn't apply for those not involved in the game, meaning Ben could shout every answer across the river, bagging the team an impressive score of 19 out of 20. How handy that Ben Fogel. <laughs> Number 7, Al Murray takes a pee on a journey. The Series 3 contestants were asked to propel a pee the furthest distance, to land and remain on a red carpet. While the majority began flinging their pee with no particular technique, Rob Beckett noted that propel simply meant to move something with force or drive, and proceeded to stroll around the garden with the pee in a wheelbarrow for 414 metres. Oh! So 406 plus another, another 8 metres. 
However, it was Al Murray who took this ambiguous definition much further, quite literally, as he rolled his pee in the red carpet and heaved it into a taxi, travelling up the motorway for nearly 18 miles. This is fantastic. Yeah, making a lot of progress. 16 miles. The £150 cab journey was a small price to pay for Taskmaster success. Oh, oh, out. Oh, oh, yes! It remained on the carpet, out. Number six, Rasheen and Tim utilise Alex. Show creator Alex Horn oversees all tasks and often calls the shots when it comes to fair play, but being in the vicinity of the contestants can lead to grim circumstances. In series one, when Roisin Conaty and Tim Key had to guess the contents of five pies without breaching them, they realised that the rules didn't technically apply to Alex. What about if you taste it and based on your reaction, I decide what pie you're eating. I haven't broken the rules. Roisin ordered Alex to taste the pies and guessed what might be inside based on his reaction. However, she created her own hurdles by not looking at him as he ate them. Tim used the superior method of asking him to smash the pies so he could see what was inside, allowing him to win the task comfortably. I, mean, I can try to unscrew it. Yeah, unscrew it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, Richard Osman's grammatical interpretation. As die-hard fans of Taskmaster will know, deciphering the exact words written on the instructions is key. The wording of one task in series two caused some controversy. Place these three exercise balls on the yoga mat on the top of that hill. Some enlisted help from the public, while others were more full-on, rolling and kicking the balls up the hill with varying amounts of success. For Richard Osman, reading the instructions a second time revealed an obscure use of grammar, and he resolved that he could collect the mat and take it directly to the exercise balls at the foot of the hill. Oh, no. Quite steep, isn't it, Richard? Yeah, yeah. I was so tempted to use this as a sledge. Um... Done. After a confused call to lexicographer Susie Dent, it was confirmed this was a valid understanding of the instructions, and Richard got to enjoy Taskmaster success and a less intense workout. She finishes by saying, I'd say how Richard decided to understand it is unusual, but not impossible. No. So, yeah. Number four, Joe Lycett's zero second victory. Series four of Taskmaster brought us both hilarious and impressive moments. And what greater way is there to outsmart the Taskmaster than completing a task before it has even begun? feel like I might need them. That's exactly what Joe Lycett did during a tiebreaker task in episode 7. After entering the lab, he saw a jar of mayonnaise covered in Vaseline and predicted exactly what the task would be. He then opened the jar before even reading the instructions. You do whatever you want, Joe. Guessing the nature of the task was quite straightforward. It was a stroke of genius by Joe to be proactive and complete it before anyone could start a timer. This allowed him to win the task in an unbeatable zero seconds. It doesn't get much better than that. Number three, Mark Watson sheds some light. Taskmaster is extra special when a contestant manages to be clever, yet still execute the task terribly. Series four contestant Hugh Dennis had many memorable moments, notably his clever solution to drawing someone he couldn't look at directly by getting a mirror from the house. Mark Watson in the following series, however, swiftly asserted his dominance when tasked with painting a rainbow in a dark room with only glow in the dark brushes and paint pots. Yeah, so when I draw on there, I'm not going to see anything at all. That's Why? the fun of the task. Why not? Uh, it's too dark. Oh. While everybody struggled, Mark did an obvious thing that everyone missed. He turned on the light. I don't think it probably is, but it would be silly of me not to at least try. I didn't say I can't turn the light on. <laughs> I mean, that does help. Uh, is that against the rules? 
It's a lot easier like this. It's much easier, actually, yes. This is why normally we have likes. Yet, like you, Mark still managed to create questionable art, despite his astuteness. It's oh. worse than what we did in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Even so, his light bulb moment had the other contestants kicking themselves for not being so sharp. Number two, keep Alex dry. Tasks requiring effective teamwork often best reveal how well contestants respond under pressure. One team set themselves apart in Series 6 during a mission to keep Alex dry while he sat under a shower that would turn on after two minutes. Let's keep it off his feet then. Yeah, 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 really good. Good. Oh, we That's got a lot on his yeah. His back is going to be dry. His front isn't though, is it? Yeah. While the first team haphazardly covered him in bin bags and other items in a mostly failed attempt, the second team calmly considered their options. They eventually disconnected the hose from the shower, establishing a safe distance between Alex and the flowing water. So Don't touch Alex at any point, though. Feels like he's going to be yeah, right there. Or we could just turn the hose off. Whoa. If we disconnect it, it makes it go over here. <laughs> They even had time to make him a dry martini, as well as point hair dryers at him, resulting in an even drier Alex than at the beginning, and leaving the taskmaster thoroughly impressed. We're gonna hair dry you as well. The shower is on. Yeah, well, it looks like you're pretty dry, eh? Number one, Hugh Dennis's basketball on a treadmill. Taking our top spot is the moment in Series 4 where Hugh Dennis gave it his all to achieve a time score in a task that was completely unsurpassable. Hang on. In order to keep a basketball on a running treadmill for as long as possible, forbidden to touch both the basketball and the treadmill, Hugh covered the basketball with a large tub for stability as the treadmill began to speed up. This proved to be effective, but he decided he could do one better by asking Alex to bring the extension cable to him so he could pull the plug and cease the entire operation. With his basketball spending an extraordinary four months unmoved, he was much deserving of his round of applause. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.